In this video, we are going to discuss the time complexity of binary search algorithm. That is, you can understand what is best, worst and average cases and what does it really mean. Before that, you should understand what is binary search algorithm, how it works and how to implement it. See, we discussed all these things in our previous video and I am going to provide you the link in the description box. You can check it out there. Now, whenever you want to analyze an algorithm, first you should find out the basic unit of computation. That is, the basic operation which is involved in that particular algorithm to complete the given task. Say for example, in binary search algorithm, the task is to find out the search element in the given array. In order to complete the task, we are comparing the search element with the middle element, right? So here, the basic unit of computation is comparison. Or you can say the basic operation which is involved in binary search algorithm is comparison. Now, our goal is to find out how many times the algorithm performs comparison. If it performs minimum number of comparison, then that is the best case. If it performs maximum number of comparison, then that is the worst case. See, here the time taken to perform minimum number of comparison is obviously less than the time taken to perform maximum number of comparison. And that's why we are telling this minimum number of comparison as a best case and this maximum number of comparison as a worst case. Now, I am going to take this array of size 8. And see, here the elements are sorted. Why? Because binary search algorithm will work efficiently on sorted data. And that's why I have taken sorted array. So, the best case will occur when our first comparison is correct. Or you can say when the search element is equal to the very first middle element of the array. In that situation only, the best case will occur. Say for example, we need to find whether 6 is present in this array or not. So, the search element is 6. Initially, this left iterator will point to the starting index of the array and this right iterator will point to the ending index of the array. Now, we need to calculate the midpoint using this two iterators or you can say middle iterator. As we discussed in the previous video, we need to use this formula to calculate the middle iterator. So, L is 0 and R is 7 and the midpoint is 3. So, this is our very first middle element that is 6. Now, the binary search algorithm will compare this search element with this middle element. So, both are equal and the element is found and it is present at the third index of the array. And the algorithm will return that index. Right? So, in this situation only, best case will occur. Which means order of 1. So, the best case is order of 1. Now, let's move on to the worst case. So, the worst case will occur when the search element present either at the beginning of the array or at the end of the array. In both the situations, the worst case will happen. Say for example, I am going to take this 2 as a search element and 6 is the middle element. Now this middle element will be compared with the search element. So both are not equal. So the algorithm will move this right iterator to here. So our first comparison is not correct. So we are moving to the second iteration and again we need to calculate the new midpoint. So L is 0 and R is 2. And the middle element is 3. Now, this 3 will be compared with the search element. So, both are not equal. So, again, the algorithm will move this right iterator to here. Now, again, we need to calculate new midpoint. So, L is 0 and R is 0 and midpoint is also 0. So, all the three iterators are pointing to the same location. And the middle element is 2. Now, this 2 will be compared with the search element. Both are equal. And the element is present at the 0th index of the array. And that index will be written by the binary search algorithm. 
see here this is the pattern or logic which is involved in this algorithm in the first comparison the original array is divided into two halves and the sub arrays size is 4 and in the second comparison we took the left sub array and again divided into two halves and the sub arrays size is 2 and in the third comparison again we took the left sub array and divided into two halves and the sub array size is 1 here I have just rewritten this pattern like this and represented it in a mathematical notation see here 8 is the array size so n and 2 is the base that is we are dividing the array into two halves so 2 is the base and k is the number of iterations or number of comparisons performed and that will be equal to 1 because we are keep on dividing the array into two halves until the array size becomes 1 and that's why this is equal to 1 now our goal is to find out how many times the algorithm performs comparison that is we need to find out this k for that I am just moving this to the right hand side and taking the log on both sides and the value of this log 2 is 1 so k is log n which is the worst case now with this equation you can find out what is the maximum number of comparisons required to find the element in the given array of size n say for example here our array size is 8 and the value of log 8 is 3 that is k equal to 3 so in the worst case we need three comparisons to find the element in the given array and one more thing the worst case will also occur when the search element is not present in the array in that case also we perform k number of comparisons so best case is order of 1 worst case is order of login and average case is order of login